Hi everybody, it's Michael here with another video on 3D printing. Today I'm going to depart a little bit from my usual thing and rather than talking about a particular product or a procedure, I'm actually going to talk about assembling a good uh, RepRap toolkit for 3D printing. And I'm going to do this in three stages. The first stage I'm going to talk about is going to be the most basic set of tools that you're going to want to have next to the printer at all times. So, so this is assuming that you have just purchased a printer that comes right out of the box and you're ready to start printing and there's still going to be some tools you're going to want to have handy because especially when you're first commissioning the printer, you're going to want to know if it's working correctly. So we're going to start with that. The second stage, I'm going to uh, add the additional tools that I think you're probably going to want if you're building a kit or if you're getting something that doesn't come with a complete set of tools, which uh, most of them don't now. They come with a lot of stuff, but there's still some extra stuff you're going to want to make sure you have. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the extra tools beyond that that you're going to want if you are actually sourcing and building your own parts for your own printer. So if you're basically using some a uh, hardware store or some McMaster car type parts, some smooth rod, some threaded rod, and then you're using printed parts to create your printer, you're going to want some extra tools and we'll talk about that too. So to start off, the most basic set of tools, and to tell you the truth, I don't even like to fire up my printer without having this stuff around. And in no particular order, these are the tools that I always want to have with me. Uh, one is a this is very easy. These are all very basic tools, by the way. And this is just a set of uh, cosmetic tweezers uh, that I got at the, uh, in the beauty section of a retail store down the street from my house. And they are just uh, a regular set of tweezers. And I recommend not getting a set that come to a point. But if you can see this here, I don't think my camera will focus that close. But these actually have a little flat area that joins and that makes that a little bit easier to use. And what I use this for is uh, once I've heated up the uh, the hot end and I've got everything ready to print, before I actually start the print I'll just go ahead and extrude about uh, 5 or 10 millimeters of filament just to make sure that the uh, the hot end is in fact full of good liquid fresh plastic and then with whatever extrude is sticking out I'll just grab that and remove it. So that's going to be uh, item number one are the uh, tweezers. Number two, it's a pretty similar object actually. I'm going to recommend getting a good set of needle nose pliers. Uh, this is my small set. I do have a larger pair that I do like to keep with me, and there's always something that you need to grab when you're uh, tuning your printer, and these are very, very handy to have right nearby. The next item is going to be a set of uh, diagonal cutters, or uh, you could actually almost consider these wire cutters. And use these for uh, cutting filament when you're changing filament and things like that. You're going to want to have these around. They really make your life a lot easier when you are doing your 3D prints. I have a second set of these. It's the same thing, just smaller. Uh, in case there's some little tight area you might need to get into on the printer, these work uh, just like a charm. Uh, the next thing, I always keep at least one, often two, just regular hobby knives around. And this is just a regular um, hobby knife that you would find for you know in any kind of arts and crafts store or any kind of model shop or anything like that. And there's always something that either needs to be pried up or cut or trimmed or something. And, uh, and this is just a regular, I want to say this is a number two handle, I think it is, and just a regular number 11 blade. And you can buy these blades in bulk, and that's what I recommend doing because these do uh, take quite a beating. So uh, a couple of those. Also, I am storing these in a uh, failed print. This was a uh, this was going to be a fang skull, but obviously it stopped about there, and uh, the infill was just about perfect for uh, holding all my tools handy. The uh, next thing that I like to keep around is uh, just a set of this is just a cheap set of um, uh, it's a screwdriver set. It's got a handle, and then it's got 15 or 16 uh, bits or tips on it, and these have a couple different Phillips head, a couple different uh, flat head sizes, and some torques. So these are also very nice for making little adjustments uh, during the course of using your printer. Uh, also, one of the most important tools I think you can get uh, if you're going to be using your printer at all is a good set of Allen wrenches. And I recommend using the ball get, or getting the ball end type rather than the flat end type. And the reason for that is these do allow the um, uh, the the head to engage the head of the bolt at an angle. And there's lots of little tight spots on our printers where you're might, not going to be able to get the entire length of the uh, of the Allen driver in there. So being able to drive it at an angle is a real real plus. And I've got a set of those down to, uh, I want to say, 1. Point, what is it, 1 1.2, 1 1.27 millimeter, which is a tiny, annoying little size that gets used for things like grub screws a lot. So make sure you do get a complete set of those. And make sure you go metric, because just about everything we use on our printers is, in fact, metric. Uh, I also 
for bed leveling, which is probably the most common adjustment that you're going to do with your printer, uh, most of the uh, most of the instruction manuals and a lot of the videos out there will tell you to uh, uh, lower your print head until it's just above the print surface and then use a sheet of paper to kind of gauge your, your distance. And they usually say you want to be able to uh, move the paper but feel a little bit of drag on it. And you can do that if you like. I just find that with a set of precision feeler gauges like this that I can get a little more accurate um, gauge on exactly where my where uh, print head is relative to the bed and I think that helps me with my bed leveling a little bit. Uh, another really important tool that this should be probably the first thing you order after you order a printer is a set of um, calipers. Now they don't have to be digital. These happen to be digital, but if you're comfortable using Vernier uh, calipers without the digital aspect to them, that's just fine. You don't have to go crazy with these. I think this is a, uh, I got this off Amazon.com. I think I spent about $12 on this. You can easily spend 10 times that if you want to get the ones that are all super precision machined and everything else. Uh, that I don't think is critical, but you, again, what you what is critical is that you do want them to be metric and you do want them to be able to measure down to at least one one hundredth of a millimeter because that's sometimes what we need to be measuring. So yeah, tenth of a millimeter just isn't going to cut it, um, especially when we talk about some of the calibration and adjustments that we're going to be hopefully talking about a little bit later on in in some future videos so stay tuned for that so a good set of calipers very important and then the last thing that i like to keep handy is a, a, a headlamp this is just an led flashlight that is uh that has a the strap on it right here so you can wear it on your head i find that it's very very handy when i'm holding something like holding an axis up with one hand adjusting a screw with the other hand and then with my third hand i'm trying to hold the flashlight so this actually makes that quite a bit easier so that right there is our basic setup for doing RepRap uh, specifically and 3D printing in general. Okay, we've got the basic kit set aside. And now uh, situation number two, you have just ordered your uh, 3D printer kit from a very reputable supplier who has provided you with a tracking number and now you're wanting to know what you need to do in order to be ready for the, to build that kit as soon as it shows up on your doorstep. Now in addition to the basic stuff, which you are still gonna need, there's a few other things that you're gonna wanna have. Uh, a lot of this you probably already have uh, in your in your shop if you do have a workshop at all. I'm gonna suggest you're gonna want at least one adjustable wrench and then uh, you're gonna wanna have as, uh, uh, as, as broad a selection of um, box wrenches such as these you want to go down to I'd say at least uh, down to four millimeter which is the I believe the size that an M3 nut uses and we use a whole lot of M3 in RepRap so a good set of those and again they don't have to necessarily be you know super expensive super high precision or whatever uh, but with wrenches like anything else you kind of get what you pay for so it is worth it to uh, invest a little bit more in uh, either a higher quality wrench or at least someone who's going to replace it for free if uh, if it does ever get broken. Now the the closed end wrenches like this are not always going to be uh, the ideal tool, tool for the job. They are of course better if you know if you can fit the uh, tool around it but you also might want to look at getting a set that are open on the end too uh, just because there are going to be times where the um, closed end wrench is not going to fit. You're also going to want, uh, in addition to the needle nose pliers that we had before, you know, just some few other random pliers. Here are some small ones. Here are some large ones. Uh, you know, there's always going to be something you need to grab or something you need to pull on or something like that. And these are going to be the tool for the job. Uh, along those lines, I'm going to highly recommend getting a good set of wire strippers and cutters. Uh, it saves so much time and energy when it comes time to start stripping wires to be able to just slide the wire right in here and just give it a quick squeeze and pull and you're done and you've got a nice um, stripped end. Uh, these go down to uh, number 32 uh, American Wire Gauge Stranded. So this is, this is for very small wires. I actually have another set for slightly larger wires. For This would be for things like uh, power supply wires and things like that. So you can uh, get one or more pairs of those if you like. Those are going to be very, very handy. Uh, also, once we're putting a kit together, you're going to want to have some more measuring tools because you are going to want things to be correctly sized. You're going to want things to be uh, square, plumb, and straight, and all that kind of stuff. So I right here have a 30 centimeter, um, or right, more appropriately, a 300 millimeter uh, steel ruler. In obviously that's metric. Uh, that's a that's a an okay uh, quality part right there. Uh, I did invest a little bit extra in a, uh, a very high precision. Uh, uh, this is a 150 millimeter 
ruler. Uh, it's about five and three quarter inches for those of you in uh, uh, that like to deal in inches. And that is worth it to have a, to have a really good accurate scale when you're trying to make sure that everything is lined up just so. Uh, the final tool I'm going to recommend in the measuring department is a really good quality combination square. This is one that I got when I was doing a lot of woodworking. So uh, you don't necessarily have to go quite as high quality or as, as expensive as this one happens to be. I want to say this one is probably about uh, $80 US if you were to buy one new. Uh, it is totally worth it. It's got a nice precision ground uh, straight edge right here. And this is very square. This is a 90 degree corner. And that is very handy when you're trying to figure out why your prints are not straight. Uh, the next thing I would suggest is a uh, is to get just a basic multimeter. Again, you don't have to you don't have to get the super duper fancy one. Uh, this one again was about a ten dollar part, I think, and I'm pretty sure I got this either at a retail store or a home center or something like that. And this is just very very handy when you start troubleshooting when you put your printer together and you see that some motor is not moving the way it's supposed to or something else isn't lighting up that's supposed to. And this will help you really track down either something that's shorted or something that maybe a connector's on backward or something like this. This really does help with the troubleshooting. So this is a pretty good investment also. The last thing uh, that I'm going to recommend on the intermediate set is, now I know a lot of people get very intimidated when you start talking about soldering, uh, but I'm going to really recommend just getting a good soldering iron. This one right here is a, uh, again, this one is not really super high end. This is a, a Weller brand, which is well known and they are very well respected, but this is not one of their higher end irons. And this one I think is, you know, probably available for around uh, $40 with the, um, with the base. The base is not necessary, but just do make sure that when it's hot, you've got somewhere to hold it so that it's not lighting your shop on fire. Uh, so many people are so intimidated by soldering, and I've seen this all through my life, and really it's one of those things where it is so much easier to just learn how to do it, and then you just don't have to worry about it. You probably can figure out how to get through building a printer without soldering, but it's going to be so much more work than it is to just learn how to solder and just get it done right the first time. So that right there is what I'm going to suggest is going to be a very good starting point for a uh, for an intermediate kind of toolkit, one where you are building a kit and then going to operate it. So uh, in just a moment, we'll be talking about the advanced toolkit uh, for someone who's going to be building their own printer from parts. Okay, so now maybe you've built a printer from a kit and it's time to move on to actually building your own printer from printed parts and uh, parts that you source locally or from the internet or wherever. Okay, there's just a couple other things you're gonna need that is gonna make your life a lot more easy, I think. I learned this when I was building my Prusa i3 single sheet from uh, exactly that printed parts and uh, parts that I source from the internet locally. Uh, and really, you could probably get by with the tools that we have described so far, but it will save you a little bit of labor and a lot of frustration if you just get a couple other things. And these are a little bit more of an investment, but I think are completely worth it. Uh, I would suggest getting a good set of metric drill bits. And these are not, in the United States, the easiest thing to come across. I was able to order these from Amazon.com. They were a little bit more expensive than I was hoping they would be, but it's a good set of uh, titanium nitride treated high-speed steel drill bits. Now, I'm not gonna be using these to drill holes in things. What I am gonna be using these for, though, is to clean out the uh, the holes in, um, you know, and in the Prusa i3, for example, there's holes in the Y corners for the Y axis. There's uh, holes in the X axis, and all these need to be clean, and they need to be sized correctly and uh, this is what you're going to do is just you, you, you don't even need to chuck these up into a um, into an actual drill you can just with your hand run through and make sure that these are cleaning out all the holes where you're going to insert your smooth and your threaded rods so those i think are a nice investment this particular set i think is going to last me a long time it's in a nice metallic uh case and uh, and i think these are these are going to be a long term i'm going to have a long-term relationship with those drill bits the last thing i'm going to recommend is uh a rotary tool uh, like this. And these are commonly made by the Dremel company. In fact, I think this one's probably made by the Dremel company too. It's actually branded by somebody else. Uh, and this is just a, uh, I don't recommend the cordless one just because it's the, the battery is great. Uh, but really what you need when you're cutting, especially something like stainless steel, is uh, something that's gonna just continue to give you consistent power until you're done with it. Uh, a lot of people have had good luck with hacksaws. To me, that just seems like that is an awful lot of work. And uh, when I was cutting up my uh, thread rods and my smooth rods I was very glad that I had this this really I think saved me a lot of wear and tear on my shoulder 
and made the job a lot quicker. One thing I did do was uh, I actually got some of these, um, these are larger, these are inch and a half, uh, and they're, these are very aggressive uh, cutting wheels that are made specifically for cutting hard metals like stainless steel, and then I also got this little um, quick release collet on there. So this uh, really helped me quite a bit when I was making my, my Prusa i3. And so this is one I would recommend. Now these last two, I gotta say, are probably optional. They are really in the category of making your life a lot easier. I can't emphasize a lot easier enough. <laughs> um, so really right here, what you have, I think, is your uh, is a good solid toolkit that's going to carry you through just about any rep wrap uh, issue that may come down the pike. Uh, if you if you have all of this stuff, you're going to be ready to build a printer. You're going to be able to field strip a printer, repair one, just about anything you need to do, you're going to be able to do with these tools. Now, I have not talked about any of the consumables, um, things like zip ties, things like window cleaner, things like acetone and all the chemicals that you need to use, and of course, filament. But just for the tools that you're going to need in order to, to uh, care and feed your rep wrap. I think this is pretty much uh, what I would recommend. Now, if you guys have any additions, especially if you think that I missed something that's really important or you've got uh, something that has completely made your life easy when you're dealing with your printers, by all means, let me know because number one, I'd want to get one too. And number two, I'd want to pass that along to anybody who's watching this. So um, uh, again, please let me know if I've missed anything important or if you think I've made any missteps. I'd love to hear about that because I'm all about learning. So hopefully uh, you got something out of this. Hopefully this has been a good experience for you too. Thank you very much for watching. And if this, uh, if you did like this video, again, please like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff that you do on YouTube. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.